Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. Today I will be designing and building a simple timer clock to control a fan. Or you could use it for whatever you like. Let's start by taking a look at the requirements I have for the final product. So there's not many requirements at all. I wanted to have a display so we can see the time. Or it can act like a clock also. I wanted to act as a switch so when we set an on and an off time, it will switch the load on or off. And I'm thinking of using a relay for this. There could be more on and off times. I think I will need at least two. And I wanted to save the set time, so if the unit is powered off, it will remember. I decided to use four seven segment displays for this project because I think they look nice. I could of course have used uh, one of these 16 by 2 character LCD displays but I used these for a lot of projects and I wanted to try something new. And I will of course need something to control all this and uh, the easy option is a microcontroller so that's what I'll use. And this one is a PIC16F628A microcontroller. And to control these seven segment displays, I decided to use a 4511 fiber chip. And I will need some buttons. And I'm just using these momentary push buttons. And I thought I needed one of these watch crystals, a uh, 32.768 kilohertz crystal, because that's normally what's used for a, uh, a clock. But I discovered later that I didn't need that, so I'm just using a 4 MHz. We will need a few resistors and capacitors. And let's just throw in a 5 volt linear regulator as well. Plus 4 NPN transistors for the multiplexing of the 7 segment displays. So here's what I was thinking. I did make a few minor changes to this, but it's basically what I ended up using. We have the microcontroller, the display driver, the displays, and the buttons. And we have the relay here. So I have a mode button, a digit select button, and a plus and a minus. And these are held to ground with some pull down resistors and they will go high when a button is pressed and that's fed into the microcontroller and that is driving the display driver and that goes off to the displays and the microcontroller also handles the multiplexing of the displays so we only need one driver and that's basically driving all the displays and then the ground is just uh, switched in one at a time so it will go one two three four one two three four and the microcontroller will send out the correct number to each display and it does this very fast so you can't see that three of them is actually off at any time. The microcontroller can also turn on this relay and I just added the NPN transistor here. So originally I had the 32 kilohertz crystal in here also but I was running out of pins on the microcontroller so I decided to take a look at the data seed and I actually found that with a 4 MHz crystal I could uh, divide that down to one second as well so I ended up by just using a 4 MHz. And now I even have one pin in excess. So this microcontroller has three timers but if you want to ditch the 32 kHz crystal then timer 2 is of interest. What is interesting about this timer is the post scaler, but we will get back to that. By reading the data sheet, we will find everything we need. It starts by saying timer 2 is an 8 bit timer with pre scaler and a post scaler. The input clock is divided by 4 and it can be set to pre scale to 1 to 1, 1 to 4, or 1 to 16. The timer 2 module has an 8 bit period register PR2. 
the TMR2 register value increments from 0, 0 hex until it matches the PR2 register value and then resets to 0, 0 hex in the next increment cycle. The match output of the timer 2 goes through a 4 bit post scaler, which gives a 1 to 1 to 1 to 16 scaling to generate a timer 2 interrupt. So, what this basically means is we have a hell of a lot of different options to divide the main clock frequency down to get a timer increment that we can use for whatever we want. As said, the prescaler can divide it by a factor of 4 or a factor of 16. And after that, we have the post scaler that can be any value between 1 and 16. And we had the PR2 register where we can set the timer to overflow at any number we want between 0 and 255. So if we take our main frequency of 4 MHz and we divide that by 4, the timer 2 frequency is always divided by 4 and the main frequency will get 1 million. And we divide it by the prescaler, we will set this to 16 and we divide it by the post scalar. We will set this to 10. And we will then set the PR2 register to 250. And we'll get 25. So that means every time the timer has run out 25 times, one second has passed. And that should be very easy to turn into a clock. And remember the data seed set it would make an interrupt for every overflow, so we'll get 25 overflows or interrupts a second. And we can just count those and we know every time we hit 25, we need to increment the clock by one second. And this is just a quick overview of the T2Con register that's used to set all this, except for the PR2 register, that's a different one. But again, we have the prescaler, a bit to turn the timer on or off, and the post scaler. For this timer there's no option to take an external clock signal to drive the timer, but there is for the two other timers, timer 0 and timer 1. So if we wanted to use the 32 kHz crystal then we couldn't use the timer 2. But if you want to use the internal or the external 4 MHz crystal then we would have to use timer 2 because the two other timers cannot be divided down to match one second with a 4 MHz crystal. So with all this figured out I could start to write this, the software for the timer. So that was what I did next. So I have chosen a different method to describe the software than I used to do because the, it's, the code is a little longer and I guess it would not make much sense if I just went through all of it. So I did this block diagram basically of the code so we can go through the different blocks and we can take a look at the actual code and see where these blocks are placed in the code. So when the device is turned on it will ask us for the current time and we will input that. And when we have done that it will enter mode 0 but it will read the e squared prompt to get the uh, saved values for when to turn on or off the relay. And these values we can set if we change the mode. But basically the mode 0 is the normal operation where it will just display the clock on the display and turn the relay on or off when that's needed. If we enter mode 1 to 3 by pressing the mode button on the unit we can set we can set a time to turn on, a time to turn off, and a second time to turn on and a second time to turn off because I added two different uh, on or off times or what we should call them in here. So we can set it to turn on at 9, turn off at 10, turn back on at 11 and turn back off at 12. So basically mode 1 will ask you for the first on time, mode 2 will ask you for the first off time, 3 will ask you for the second on time and I made a mistake here that should be a 4 and 5 down here so 4 up here will ask you for the 
second off time and when we enter mode 5 that's down here that will just save these values and it will return to mode 0 so I'll just correct this to a 4 and a 5 and also when we are in mode 0 we can get back to the set time by pressing both plus and minus at the same time so we don't have to power off the unit or change the time that's a section that will control the relay it will take these values and do whatever it needs to do and of course we will need to display all this on the 7 segment display and to do this we'll have to convert it to single digits because these are stored as a double digits if you have a 10 that's just a 10 but you'll need to display it as a 1 and a 0 so this just splits it up into single digits it will send it to the multiplexer and it will send it out to this place so that's basically it and I will just very quickly scroll through the code here so we can get a basic understanding of what is going on I start by defining the frequency we'll use that for the delay routine I set the uh, configuration bits because we'll need an external oscillator I have a few prototypes for the um, EE prime read and write functions and down here the important things are the timer 2 configuration and the PR2 register we talked about that earlier and we have all the variables and there's a lot and we get into the main <coughs> program and this is all for the buttons the function and the debounce and here is where we count the timer to interrupts and remember 25 will give us one second and after 59 seconds we will have 1 minute plus 0 seconds and the same for minutes and the same for hours except it's after 23 hours the next one will give us 0 hours and 1 day I actually don't use this day variable anyway but I just included it there and we'll then enter mode 0 and here we will divide our variables into the displayed variables so if we have a 12 for example we'll have to divide that into a 1 and a 2 and to get the most significant digits we can take the minute variable and divide it by 10 by doing this with characters or integers we cannot have anything after the decimal place and that will just be deleted even if it's one point uh, sorry if it's 19 divided by 10 that will be a 1 also it will not round up so here it's actually an advantage that it's not rounding off to the uh, nearest whole number and by multiplying this by 10 again we have just lost the least significant digits if it was 12 we will just lose the 2 and we'll get a 10 if we subtract that from the <coughs> original value we'll get the least significant and exactly the same thing for the hour it will read the EE prom if it's not yet been done This one checks if both plus and minus are pressed then we'll have to go into the mode where we can change the display time and that mode I call mode 11 I just chose something that was not used for anything else and if mode is greater than zero this means that we will be able to change the digits on the display 
in mode 0 where it's just running we cannot change anything but here we can and if mode equals 1 it will take the first on time as I said and the same thing for 2 except it's for the off and so on and I said it saved at the fifth mode but it actually saves every time you increment the mode it saves the previous so that's why I need a fifth just to save the last one here and we get to where it will multiplex and display and it just sets the port B to the least significant minute value and it will turn on that appropriate transistor and we'll have a delay it'll do the same thing for the 10 minutes for the hour and the 10 hour and the reason I need this delay is because the rest of the code will take some time to execute so the last one here will be lit up for longer than the others if I don't have this so I just uh, trimmed this until all the transistors are on for the same amount of time and this part is controlling the relay and we have the read and write functions for the EEPROM and that's about it and I went ahead and built this on a breadboard and yes it looks like a mess so I just confirmed that it was working and I made a PCB and we'll take a look at that one instead because this is just a total mess and here it is and there is nothing that we haven't discussed earlier I decided to put the displays and the buttons on the back side because I will mount this in a case where this has to go against the front panel and if I had all this crap around then it couldn't uh, reach through the panel and I put some gong over here because this could be used for high higher voltage like 230 volts AC or something and the last thing you want to do is grab around this and get shocked so. so let's power this up and see if it's still working I don't know how good this turns up on camera but it is actually visible it's just not very clear on the screen here but it uh, asks us for the current time and we'll just set that to zero if we press the mode button it will go into its normal operation if we press the mode button again it will ask us for the first on time and we can set that to turn on at two minutes and turn back off three minutes Oops. on at four minutes and off at five minutes and we'll just have to wait and see and I don't know if you heard that but the relay just clicked there and I added a visual indicator as well so the last dot point here lights up when the relay is on and here it turned back off again on and off so at least it's working and you could in theory add as many of these modes as you wish to but I just need two so and this would look better in a case so uh, conveniently I have already made one and here it is 
and that's just some uh, hack together aluminum enclosure and I tried to etch this uh, text in here but uh, it didn't come out as good as I hoped I was etching this with uh, hydrochloric acid and it could uh, kind of dissolve the uh, masking I used for the uh, labels here so it got a little washed out but it's readable so I guess it's kind of okay and this is how it looks when it's inside the case and so here it is mounted on the wall and connected to a fan sorry the wires haven't been fastened yet but, uh, I think it actually turned out pretty good but uh, if I were to change one thing it should be these menus because I am the only one on this planet that knows what this means for example this is the time for the fan to turn on and this one it should turn off it should turn back on and it should turn off but there is no indication to say which mode you're in so you kinda have to remember Well, I did think about it while designing it, but uh, the driver chip that I'm using will not allow me to write letters. It can only do numbers. So I guess people kind of wouldn't get the point anyway if it just spit a number in your face. And also I forgot to change the resistor for the decimal point, so that is a little bit dim. And as you saw, it is supposed to turn on at 9.30, so... Let's see if it will do that. So if you like this project you can find it on my website ec-projects.com and all the files and code will be available there. I might do a version where I use one of these combined LED displays instead and perhaps the board will be a little bit smaller because I use a lot of space for all these traces and on this one I don't have to get nearly as much in there. Anyway if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will see ya